proper fraction is a fraction whose numerator is smaller than the denominator, ignoring negative signs. Here are some examples of proper fractions. Here, 1 is smaller than 2, 3 is smaller than 7, 157 is smaller than 1,000. Again, I don't even consider the negative signs. Don't even look at those. So if the top is smaller than the bottom, they're proper fractions. An improper fraction is a fraction that has been misbehaving lately. That's right, it's behavior is totally improper. Ah, just kidding. Here's the real definition. An improper fraction is a fraction whose numerator is greater than or equal in value to the denominator. Again, ignoring any negative signs. Here's some examples of improper fractions. As you can see, the numerators are all larger than the denominators. So 7 is larger than 2, 5 is bigger than 4. Again, we're not even considering the negative whatsoever. 90 is larger than 83. They're all improper. Integers can be represented as improper fractions simply by placing a 1 in the denominator. So something like this 4 can really be 4 over 1. This is now an improper fraction. Negative 3 can be done likewise. And see, according to our definition, the numerator doesn't have to be just larger. It can be, actually be equal. So this technically is an improper fraction, 1 over 1. Let's take a look at a pie graph of 9 eighths. In a similar way, we can represent this as pizza. Our 9 eighths is 8 slices plus one more. But there's another way of seeing this. See, this is one entire whole pizza. So this is just one. Plus, we have one more slice. How would you represent that? An eighth. So we have one eighth. Now, we can actually combine this together. And it would look like this. You would read this one and one eighth. And this brings us to our next definition. A mixed number is a compact form of expressing the sum of an integer and a proper, not improper fraction. It is just the integer followed by the proper fraction with no space or symbols between the numbers. When reading mixed numbers, always use the word and between the integer part and the fractional part. How would you read this? This is 2 and 3 fifths. Here we have negative 1 and 9 tenths. A complex fraction is a fraction with other fractions within it. These many fractions can appear in the numerator, denominator, or both. Now, a complex fraction is also known as a compound fraction. But I don't want to use that term because it can be confused with compound fracture. But according to some students, the, the fraction is actually more painful than the fracture. So let's stick with the complex fraction. Let's do some examples. Here are some examples of complex fractions. And notice on the first one here, I actually used the slanted fraction bar. In this case, we want to keep it nice and compact, and so that kind of looks kind of nice. And over here, we have a fraction divided by a fraction. And here we have an integer divided by a fraction. Again, slanted fraction bar is OK. It's more compact. For example, 6, I'd like you to classify each of these fractions as either a proper fraction, improper, mixed number, or complex fraction. So I want you to give it a try first, and then I'll give you the answer. Let's take a look at the first one. Well, the numerator is smaller than the denominator, so this is a proper fraction. Here, fraction over something is kind of complicated. Well, that's a complex fraction. Here, we have an integer with a fraction, proper fraction. So this is actually a mixed number. Over here, again, the numerator is smaller than the denominator. This is proper. And over here, we have a mess. <laughs> but how would you classify this? 
Well, it's a fraction, or actually a mixed number over a fraction, so this is going to be a complex fraction. And here, this is going to be, well, notice the numerator is bigger than the denominator, so this is going to be an improper fraction. For exercise number seven, I'd like you to write down the improper and mixed number that's represented by the shaded regions right here in this figure right here. So give that a try. Well, let's see what's going on here. Well, this is cut into four parts. One, two, three, four. And so is this. One, two, three, four. We have four, five, six, seven. Seven shaded regions. So we have seven, but they were originally cut into four parts each. So our improper fraction is seven-fourths. Now, how would this be represented as a mixed number? Well, this is one whole figure, right? So it's going to be one, and we have one, two, three out of the four. So we have one and three-fourths or three-quarters. Let's take a look at this one. Again, I want you to try first. What's going to be the improper fraction and the mixed number representation of this scenario. Well, we have everything cut into thirds. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven thirds. That's my improper. But what else do we have? We have one whole, two holes. We have two whole parts and we have a little one left over. That's going to be one of three, so we do that. So it's going to be two and one third is our mixed number. Now this one's a little bit tougher. I want you to take a good look at this and decide well, what's going to be the improper and mixed number representation of this. Well, let's see. Everything you notice is being cut in half. This is going to be, this is one, so that's, that's a half of that. There's half of there. So everything's in halves. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven halves. So that's going to be our improper fraction. What about the mixed number? Well, we have one whole unit, two, three. And then we have, see, we have half left over. So it's going to be three and one half. 